I'm Josh. And I'm Anthony. And this is Red Hat Garage. We're automotive enthusiasts who buy, revive, fix, sometimes break, anything we can find with an engine. Hey guys, it's a couple weeks later. We're sitting here in the guest house at Josh's. Typically not the type of scene that we video in, but for the tractor, as this is part two for that video, we have to do some things that are a little unconventional. We gotta put the bearing in to the axle shaft hub as it was the seals were leaking in it, and that was what the last video was about, was taking this thing apart. We got some of it back together. We ordered all the parts. It took forever to get them. Oh, sorry on the delay on that, but we got the collar, the bearings, the seals, all that's here now, and we're getting it ready to get put together. I guess saved you guys the boredom of putting in the seals and the race on the hub and the studs because three of them on this side of the axle shaft were actually loose and just popped off. So we did all that, just powdered them in. That's really simple stuff. Hopefully you guys don't need any direction on that. So now, what we're gonna end up doing is we got the bearing actually in the oven over here in the guest house. Don't do this in your guys' regular oven or at your mom's or anything like that. She'll probably get mad at you, especially if the park gets oil on it. I clean this one out really good. Brick clean, you know, hand clean it. That way it doesn't stink too bad. It'll just be metal getting heated up. We do that because it needs to come over top of this surface on the shaft and it's a tight fit. So you heat it up, it expands that, slips on there, you just tap it down with a, a punch and a hammer, and you should be good to go. We got these big channel locks to grab the bearing and slip it on the shaft, as we'll probably only have one chance before it cools down. So stay tuned for that, it's heating up. All right, this bearing's been in this oven at about 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Let it sit in there for a while, get everything all nice and heated up evenly, so that way it expands evenly and it goes on the shaft evenly. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out now with the uh, big old channel locks. Don't grab them too tight, and uh, if you do, it'll mess up the roller bearings, so don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, grab it just enough to hold it on there securely, and drop it on. Alright, here we go. goes just pop it right now so what you want to do too is to make sure it's seated this has a machine surface where it sits at and the hub presses against it so it doesn't move anymore so it should be all the way down as you can see just a couple little taps to verify that it's good to go now we'll have to do the collar same type of way I've seen people do these in a little bit different way they use torches to actually heat these things up red hot I don't know if this oven will work for this, but we're gonna go ahead and try it. So, let's see how that goes. Probably actually gonna turn the oven up to. All right, that collar is in the oven. It's at 450 degrees. That way that expands more because there's no real good way to put it on there. Otherwise you just mess it up and have to buy another one. And they're not fun to get and they're expensive. So we're not gonna mess it up. So if it doesn't want to go on, I'm just going to take it back off and we'll heat it up with torches. So stay tuned for that. This thing's going to be in there for about another 15 minutes. So it's been about 30 minutes actually. I put that collar in there and set it at 450 degrees. Now that the stove is making some weird noises, I think it's probably time to take it out and try to see if it fits. Let's do that. I can get these to the right size. That should be about right. Might not go on. 
not working. So, that didn't work in the oven at 450 degrees. So we're probably gonna have to go to option B, which is to heat it up with a seven and get this thing cherry hot and then drop it on. Let it cool, because that's what shrinks it, and locks it into place. That way nothing moves. We'll do that here in a little bit. Well, as you guys can tell, it's now a, a couple days later. We tried to bake the bearing retainer. Didn't work, so we ended up having to get a uh, set of torches to use. I ended up having to take it over to my brother-in-law. Thanks, by the way, Brandon. Um, he lives down the road, so it took a couple days to get that figured out and scheduled and to get acetylene and everything else like that because he, he ran out and had a hose break and stuff. So, thanks to the time change, we haven't had a whole lot of time after our day jobs to work on things like this so everything's been in the dark it's been outside we don't have the greatest lighting so a lot of this stuff hasn't been filmed but you guys probably noticed that the axle shaft is in the tractor and the brakes are still gross and have not been touched that is because after we got everything done on the bearings and the seals we have to go ahead and shim these axles on each side of the tractor the other one's in as well we spent all last night until like 10 o'clock at night shimming this thing it's not fun you gotta pull out everything the shims go in behind the backing plate for the shoes and then we got to try to put this entire axle and hub assembly in all at once and line all these shims up so i actually was wrong when i took this apart i said two things i didn't think there was supposed to be that many shims there are there's actually a lot of shims there's almost like uh i think there's like yeah, 90 something thou worth of shims on each side right now and it actually needs more and then the second thing I was wrong on was the bearing on this is actually supposed to be greased so there's two different seals one's on the outside here one's on the inside here for the axle housing itself that actually keeps the oil the hydraulic oil of the axle inside the tube from getting into the bearing and then leaking out and then the other seal in here prevents the grease from leaking out so there's actually supposed to be grease in there not oil so found that out too and then now what we're going to do is we got to finish shimming this it's actually still touching a little bit and you guys can't see this but the other axle shaft is turning right now and it's not supposed to so it needs a little bit more shim the problem that we are running into with this for parts is that we are unable to get everything that we need in a timely manner. I bought every single shim that is called for on this tractor that was in stock that I could find at our local Massey Ferguson dealer. Those were four 16th and 21 thousandths. I got packages of them. There's a couple in each package. I even reused some of the old ones that were in good shape that weren't broke that came off the other side. And it's like we're right there. We have two 4 thousandths, uh, 4 thou shims left to use to hopefully get this right and then we have to check the run out on the axle how much it comes out and i believe that spec is supposed to be somewhere in between 20 and 80 thousands so stay tuned we're going to go ahead and do that i'll show you guys how we got to take this out put a shim in and then hopefully it goes well and we'll be done here shortly because we're losing light because daylight savings time so now we're going to go ahead and take this axle shaft off to put the new shims in fairly tight if I go the right way. <sighs> Super fun. I know. So, this has to be held up. Shaft comes out. And all these ships need to stay in there. doing this process here with these shims we're not actually replacing the seal on the inside of the axle housing yet because this thing's come that came out like five times already it's already tore up the seal even more than this side already was so after we get this all done we know our tolerances are all in spec everything's good then we'll replace the seal put the axle shaft in button everything down redo the brakes and we'll be done 
So this is the bag, the last bag of shims I have for it. Magco, they so kindly wrote down from the part number what thickness they are. These are four thousandths. I'm guessing I'm probably just gonna use both of them because I don't wanna put this on and off uh, any more times than I have to that I've already done. This is not fun, it's very heavy. So that eighth thou added on this side. This is dirty, but it doesn't really so much matter. So, these lined up, and then take one of the wheel studs that pop, or one of the wheel studs, one of the studs for the hub, pull it out, put it in, hold everything in place, then grab the axle shaft and push it all in at once. It's not been a great in there I grab the axle stub and I can shove it in there we go now I'm gonna send this thing through as quick as I can so everything grabs on here, tighten down a little bit, see what it does, and we'll go from there. I'll throw on the other two, and we can check and see if the axles are touching still. To be honest, if they are, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm out of shims, so, yeah. Okay. Those should be tight enough. Now, let's go ahead and see if the other axle moves or not. So, you guys go ahead and watch that for me. Can you see? Kinda. It's getting dark. So, you know, watch that. If it moves, let me know. you see I, I can't see so let's let's see well it looks like you guys said it was still moving so I look back at the video and you're right it is so that's not good that means that we need more shims which I don't have because I bought them all so here we go again with more parts issues we are gonna go ahead and uh, get back to this when we can get more shims so last time we were messing with the tractor, we ran out of shims, we didn't have enough. The axles were still touching internally to where if you spun one, both spun. Not supposed to do that, supposedly. So we had to get shims made. So thankfully, one of uh, family members was able to put these on his plasma table after taking measurements, and I got 16, 16th inch shims made. So two of these is around 122,000 which gets us over about 20,000 more than what we were having. So this is what he made us. And this is the biggest one that we could buy. Thickness wise. So you can see that's, you know, this is 21 thousandths. And this is uh, a 16th of an inch, which I can't remember what it goes down to anymore. So instead of using, you know, like 10 of these other shims, we're going to use two of the thicker ones. 
and hopefully that gets us where we're supposed to be at, at least on one side. Where are we shimming? Shimming the axle, man. The hub. See how it was uh, touching the other axle shaft? Down there. So yeah, it's not supposed to touch. I'm all fendered. Yeah. <laughs> are you all are fendered? Alrighty, let's uh, go back into here, clean this up. Oh, put that heavy thing in here. Ready? Pull that out again. It sucks because I don't have to mess with that. But typically, we'll twist that and it'll be okay. We don't care about the brakes at this point because they're all nasty and need to be replaced anyway. Yeah, they need a break. Yeah, so I got the oh my god, it's fun to go get a hat. <laughs> It's cold out here. Wind's not happy about anything. It all sucks. Aggressively sucks. Starting. Hold it. Like, I don't have a lot of resistance. It's like right there. Yeah, like it definitely grabs because it's like fighting me. Yeah, tell you where you're going. Maybe that's it. So. Put the spacers on both sides? No, I just put, the, that side hasn't been touched. I put the spacers on this side because you're only supposed to have to do one. So. We'll go around the lip? Yeah. What do you mean? I'll show you. There it goes. So, this is the one that Brian's made. This is one that was store bought. Mm hmm. You see, like, he did a really good job, but what do you notice? Oh, it's not. The inside diameter was not fine cut, which I don't know if that was going to make a difference or not, but if you look, it won't fit over the yeah, store bought hub shim. See how it goes over that? Mm -hmm. This goes on the inside of, you know, everything. This one doesn't fit over top of it. So the Brian made. Oh yeah, so it's not gonna. So it's kicking it out. So it has to be. I gotta freaking grind it down. Right. All right. Well, at least we'll be in the warm, so we can go do that. Nice. Always wear safety equipment. shims on one side only between the backing plate for the shoes and the axle shaft itself and uh, our axle shaft housing anyway and we finally figured that all out and then after we, we get everything done it's supposed to have two to eight thousandths worth of uh, play in it so we got our indicator here right now it's all the way pushed in like it's supposed to be the indicator sitting at 38 which will be our zero because we can't really zero this one out just the way it's designed. China. So we're going to take our pry bars on here. We already got the shims in. So this is a very long process of taking everything apart, putting more shims in or taking them out and putting everything back on. So you guys seen some of that probably in the other part of the video. So we take our pry bars here. And then we watch that indicator and we pull it out. And it went to 42, 43. Try it again. That's in between our two and eight thousands that we want. It's like four or five, which is perfect. Try it again. It went back to 39 that time. It's at 42. 
That's 3,000. So it's perfectly in between spec. It's all set now, finally, after months of waiting for shims and everything else like that. Get rid of the crappy ones and we can use the ones that were made so we don't have to stack 15 of them up at once. So this is all done now. What we're going to do is we've got to take off the axle shafts one more time, <laughs> grease the bearings, pull out the inner seals, put the new seal in, put the brakes on, and then the tractor will be usable. Let's go do that. All right, since we got these axles figured out with the, the bearing run out and everything, we got to go ahead and finish up the job. We'll clean this all up. We'll take this seal here out, this inner axle seal, and then uh, put in the new ones after cleaning everything up. And then the axle will go in, and we'll be ready to put the tires on and the brakes and whatnot and use this thing. So let's get to that. Okay, after a couple of, of poles on this, we got this one out. Easy enough. Okay, you see, it was uh, pretty much trashed. <laughs> All right, on to the next side. <sighs> this was the good side. So, get to it. Just get in here. And we just get a couple poles. And it'll finally come out here in a second. I'll give this guy a couple poles. Get this thing out of here with a seal puller. She's out. Time to clean it up. On the new ones. I don't. Nicer, but well, if you brought it, uh, we'd have one. Uh, I good. bought this for the Zerk fitting, not for this. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll we'll get in there and uh, we'll fix my tractor. Push it in there. I fix my tractor. I'll do it. We got the bearings on the axle shafts greased, and now we're ready to put in the seals that we just took out. So, we'll go in this way. Spring side in. Just saw the other ones came out. So, put it in, looks like it'll fit, and then we got this nice bearing puller tool that we're going to use. Smack it in with the hammer. Alright, it's in there. A little bit done in there, but it's fine. It's all steel. It's all set back, it's machined, set in there. The next side, that's it. It's gross. I feel like this side is the side that always gets like fluid to come out of it. Okay. Close that. No. Use a little bit of RTV 
or on the shim surfaces. Not that you need to, but it's supposed to be sealed off, but there's much grease in there, you don't want your dirt in there, so we'll seal that off too. That's an option that you can do. So we're gonna do that. All right. We got the axle shafts and everything in last night. Everything's tightened down. Brakes are good to go. We got some help to muscle these filled tires back on this I'm help. Hi. <laughs> he's got red hair too, so he's loud. Let's go ahead and get this thing on here. They're filled with beet juice or something, so they're okay. super heavy. Okay, muscle, flip it up. No. Nope. All by yourself. That ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna make myself look like a fool. All right. Ready? I'm already trying. One, two, three. <laughs> Go my way. Roll it. Yeah, roll it over there. There you go. Now go up. Hey. This was fly everything else. Yeah. Okay. All right, cameraman. Oh, jack, maybe. Jack it off. Yep, jack it up. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's like there, but it's that air. Yeah, it's on the jack, so that's not good. Can we? I don't think we're gonna be able to do it this way. No, we have to go out and like yeah, lift it up and roll it out. We're gonna go back down and roll it. So go down. We can get out. How far? Go down about another inch. Yep, like that. Just roll it. Yep, be out. Yep, just like this. Okay. Now free center. Go back that way. We need to go further. Yeah, further. Yeah, yeah, but oh, I can't. We have, have the implement here in there. We can't lift up and just Travis, get that three point in. Tuck it in. Yeah, move the arm. Yeah, just hold it. Yeah, just move it. There you go. Come out a little bit. Like right there, let's go up. Now roll it back. Alright. Oh, that's easy. Alright, so. Alright. Line up the top. Alright, lower it. Travis, go Lower it? Yeah, lower it down. As long as we don't hit the jack. Yeah, well, this is not going to hit the jack stand. Yeah. Yeah, well, we might. Stop. That's right cool. there. John. Go, uh, yep. Go up. Just hold it. Stop. Wait. Don't do anything. Oh, you're okay. You can put that nut on there a couple times. It ain't gonna go nowhere. Well, I want to get two on there before we start moving it. So that way it doesn't fall off. Alright, uh, Travis. Now, uh, kick this bottom in. Go ahead and go up. This is not green, this is red. Your eyes deceive me. Sorry, bro. Okay, now we're gonna have to go down. Just enough to get this on the hub center. God, you know. A little bit. I don't want to try to do that with one hand. Right there. Locked in. Now lift it up. That will get it, any of the tweaking off of it. Yep, that's good. Alright. Missing two. Yeah, I know. We oh. had missing studs. Gotcha. So, oh, yeah. And I didn't, we didn't grab nuts, right? Of course, we always forget something. Yeah, this out of there. Get one out. Yeah, get that jack stand out of there. Oh, 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 oh,
doing nothing. Hey, doing nothing now. You didn't do nothing. If you got the first hit, then you went out, but then it was nothing. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, maybe like, comment, or subscribe for more hot content.